Hey YouTube, thank you for stopping by my channel, The Magical Solution. My name is Leilani. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much for sticking with me. So today's topic is about tarot. Um, I had gotten a couple of questions about tarot and I wanted to answer a few of them for you guys. So to start you off, I have been doing tarot for about 23 years now and have been doing it for professionally or for money for about 13. And um, one of the biggest questions that I get when I do tarot is, um, how do you do tarot and not get sick afterwards? Um, that's a huge issue for a lot of people who is especially starting out. Oftentimes you'll experience symptoms such as headaches, um, nausea, hunger, fatigue, um, dizziness, lethargy, all that good stuff. Um, so my suggestion would be a few things. Number one, you need to meditate prior to doing your readings. That's super, super important. Meditation helps you to kind of get in the zone and you need to protect yourself and protect your energy field. So doing things like um, drinking coffee before reading, but not too much. Coffee will help you to ground your energy, but it can also prevent you from um, you know, clear sight, so it's important not to drink too much. Um, another thing you'd want to do is keep water and candy nearby. And of course, any kind of preventative is really helpful. So carrying a crystal with you or some kind of protective stone um, while you're doing a reading. Um, also, if you're very good with visualization, um, protecting your auric field and your energy field um, is also really, really great prior to doing a reading. Now, once you've gotten used to this, like once you've done readings for an extended period of time, that situation with headaches and a draining of energy and all that stuff will eventually go away. But when you're starting out, those are kind of the, some of the things that you'd want to do. Um, yeah. Another question that I was asked about the readings is how I do what I do um, and why different readers are different from each other. Like why some readers are, you know, intuitive readers, why some do ancestral stuff, why some uh, can foretell the future, um, some specialize in love, some specialize in family. So they're all like different and there's a reason for that. Um, it really depends on where they're their heart is at and where their energy is at. Some people are very much gifted with sp specific abilities because it was passed down. Some people are gifted with those abilities because they've worked on them for so long. And some people just want their focus to be where it's at. So like if they specialize in love or if they specialize in, in ancestral stuff, it's because that's where they want to be. And you, you have that same ability too. That's not something that's restricted or specialized with any in one particular person. You can do that too. Um, I myself, I would consider myself sort of an intuitive person and um, a reader for mediumship as well, but that doesn't always happen upon command. Like a lot of times I'll just be reading and all of a sudden one of their spirits will come through, one of their guardians will come through or um, a relative and will have a particular message that needs to be given and I'll be able to do that. But a lot of times it's not something that I just call upon. Like if they give me the name of their ancestor or they give me the name of someone they want to connect with, it doesn't always work like that, at least not for me. Um, I don't really specialize in anything in particular. I like to do generalized readings for a reason. I connect with spirit, I connect with energy, and whatever needs to be said to you at that time for your spiritual growth and evolution is what will come through. Um, so therefore, when you get a reading from me, I specifically prefer that you don't ask me questions or, or say, oh, can you tell me about my love life or can you tell me about my uh, financial life or whatever. I apologize for that. There's a Metro North train that comes through where I live, um, so I apologize for that. And um, so I prefer doing just a general reading and not be told anything until the very end. That's just how I do it. Um, let's see, any other questions that I remembered? Um, oh, what kind of crystals would be helpful to have around you when you're doing a reading? Um, obviously, clear, clear quartz is great to have. Um, fluorite is good to have. Labradorite is good to have. Um, amethyst. All of these kind of help to increase your psychic ability, help you zone in. Um, another thing you'd want to have when you are in a reading 
especially if you're trying to communicate with spirits or you're trying to be a medium of some kind or a channel um, energies that aren't present at that moment is you definitely want like some kind of glass of water um, water is a great um, conduit for energy and is a, a portal for spirits um, another thing you want to do for your tarot space when you're giving a reading is to cleanse that space you can do this with incense you can do this with sage you can do it with a cigar um, I prefer doing it with a cigar um, mainly because again I like to connect to the spirits of the person that I'm working with I like to connect to their guardians so not only does a cigar serve a dual purpose it, it cleans the space for me it charges my portal my my water but it also calls the spirits in which is um, kind of like a trifecta of awesomeness um, let's see what else what else you also want to keep some kind of Florida water with you or something to cleanse yourself after every reading that's really important I, I noticed that when I go to like certain festivals or um, events where I have to do multiple readings back to back um, I will I will need to kind of wash my hands off with some Florida water clean the back of my neck clean the top of my head several times I also have to smoke that cigar a little bit clean off all of my materials including the cards you want to clean the cards in between each reading um, so that that person gets a fresh clean slate otherwise you're gonna be working with the same energies from the previous person um, in and it's gonna filter into the next person's reading and it's gonna be jumbly and all messed up and you don't want that um, essential oils are also really helpful to kind of uh, protect that body remember how I was telling you if you get headaches in the beginning or if you go through issues in the beginning essential oils will definitely help to clear all that out so um, sandalwood angelica palo santo lavender those essential oils definitely help rose water and Florida water to rinse everything off also helps let's see what else what else I think that's it in terms of answering those particular questions um, Someone once asked me how I got into tarot. And believe it or not, tarot was the thing that actually started off my whole, my whole journey into the occult. I started when I was a, around 10 or 11. And um, I had picked up my first deck at nine and memorized, it was a Raider White deck. And I, I remember I tried my best to like memorize all of the cards. And I found that to be really difficult and boring. <laughs> and then I stumbled upon this deck, which is called the Sacred Circle deck. And once I picked up this deck, that was it for me. Like, this is the deck that I've been using since I was that young and will continue to do so. <laughs> um, and the story of my tarot experience is actually pretty cool. Um, I was at a Latin festival here in New York, and they do this every summer. Um, and, you know, they play, like, the Latin music, they have the Latin food, and it's, like, out in the park, and everyone's out there at the picnic tables, or maybe they have, um, you know, cloths on the ground, and everyone's sitting and eating, or they're dancing out in front of the band, whatever. So I was really, really small, and I was out on like one of those picnic blankets, one of these things. And I'm just, you know, flicking my cards and I'm shuffling them and I'm looking through my book and I'm just getting to know them and familiarizing myself with them, really having a good time. And this woman comes over and she says to me in Spanish, read me. So I don't, I don't speak Spanish. I wasn't raised on the language. I understand it, but I don't speak it. So I called my dad over and I'm like, dad, you know, she wants to get a reading. Can you just sit here and translate? for me and so he did he was like okay that's cool and and he found it to be kind of cutesy both my parents really didn't think anything of what I was doing as being serious they were just like oh she just wants to play with the car as a you know and they thought of it as like harmless so my dad sat there and I started to pull out these cards and all of the cards were like health earth cards and they were all like upside down and I was starting to get a really bad vibe about these cards and I'm like oh my gosh you know and I said to her I was like your health is not good right now and I don't I you know I don't know what's going on yet but this is not a good situation and she you know she nodded her head and she told me yeah you know keep going keep going so then I kept pulling and as I'm pulling all of a sudden I'm feeling this tightness in my chest like my lungs are, are gonna collapse and I just I can't breathe and I'm getting all choked up in my throat and I'm, I feel like I want to cough and 
I, I just didn't know what I was feeling. And so I said that to her. I was like, look, I've never felt this before, but this is what I'm feeling. I feel like I can't breathe. My chest hurts. I, I feel like I'm dying. This is, this is an awful feeling. And so my dad translated all of that for her. And, um, and I was like, I'm sorry. I, I don't know how to say this, but I feel like you're gonna die. Like these cards really don't look like you have much time, you know? And uh, so she stands up and she says to me, you know, you're right, I'm, I'm dying of cancer and I only have three months to live of lung cancer and I only, I only have a few mo more months to live. And I was like, well, you know, can you try and stop? You know, like <laughs> these cards, I mean, obviously I'm giving you this reading for a reason. Maybe there's an opportunity for you to stop. And she just throws me a 20 and she takes out a cigarette and she lights it and she says, you're really good and then just walks away and at that point you know I'm, I'm 11 you know and at that point I realized a lot of things happened um, number one I realized that the tarot is definitely a conduit it's definitely something that is an intermediary between me and the person but at the end of the day the tarot is a tool and that the real magic the real ability comes from the person and and I know that because I felt what she felt Another thing I noticed is you can never be too afraid to tell someone the truth. No matter how awful it might sound, no matter how doubtful it might feel for you, just say what you feel because you just never know if that person can relate to that. And number three, <laughs> at the end of the day, no matter how much truth you give a person, it's up to them to want to change. So. And I kind of learned that, it, like it all just hit me all at once and it was a really hard reality to know like, wow, I just sat in front of a person that I may not see again in three months or may not be alive in three months, but she came to peace with it. That was her choice and she wanted to do what she wanted to do despite the information that was being given to her, you know? And um, that was just kind of like from then on out, I realized, wow, I have a gift and I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll with this. So it became like this endless, journey into the occult where I started researching all kinds of different stuff but the tarot has always been the place where I come home to um I hope that was a helpful story another question that I get a lot is how do you memorize the tarot right like how do you get yourself to a point where you are comfortable just pulling out these cards and knowing exactly what they mean um I'm gonna go against the grain here. There's a lot of tarot readers out there that are all about memorizing those books and really learning them in and out um, and learning what they mean, reverse, and all that good stuff. I am not of that team. I'm not of that side of the world. I do not believe in memorizing the book. I do believe in knowing the cards, sure, and, and knowing their traditional meanings, sure. Um, but at the end of the day, it's about your feeling. It's about you, because really, so, if I was getting a reading from someone and they were pulling these cards and only telling me the the actual definition of the of the reading, that's not going to do anything for me as a client. And I would kind of expect you guys as clients to also feel that way and be like, wow, you know, I could totally look this up on the internet myself. Like, what did I even need you for? You know what I mean? If they're just going to spit out definitions. Um, I would prefer getting a reading from someone who can look at these cards and can literally, if their whole deck disappeared and all they had was one card left, they could still give a reading to 25 people with that one card because that card would mean something different for every person because it's not the card, it's the reader. And that's really, really important to understand. So the my advice to people who are out there trying to memorize these cards is, sure, you know, learn these cards, memorize them for what they are, but then let it go. You know, allow that to be um, information in which you store subconsciously and keep it in the back of your mind so that you have it as like a data bank of information, but don't allow it to be the thing that di dictates your reading. Instead, build a relationship with your cards. And this is what I had learned when I was younger, is keep them on you at all times. Whenever you get a spare moment, take them out and shuffle them. If you're finding yourself bored or if you're finding that you have nothing to do for five minutes while you're waiting for your doctor or while you're waiting for you know someone who's grocery shopping and you're in the car, then just sit there and shuffle them. Get your hands on them at all times. Get your energy imbued on them all, at all times. 
And what also helps too is to keep them underneath your pillow while you're sleeping so that you can dream about the cards, you know, and, and consciously tell yourself to dream about the cards and allow the cards to communicate with you in the dreams. Um, another activity that you can do that'll help you to connect with your cards even further is to pull one to three cards a day one to three cards a day and figure out a way to incorporate them into your life by first looking at those cards, sensing what they mean, reading, looking them up and seeing what the definition of them are, and then throughout the day try and place those cards in specific events that happen to you in your life. This is also really important because as you're going through your day and as you're going through like specific events and as you're relating them to the cards now you're also building up more of a data bank in your in the back of your mind like now it's becoming more realistic for you and more personal for you so that next time when you go to pull the card for a reading it actually refers to a real life experience that you have gone through and that's super important because then that's associated with a feeling, that's associated with a smell, that's associated with a touch, um, uh, with visuals, and it becomes so, so real that when you're explaining that to your client, they have a deeper awareness of what you're trying to say, okay? Um, and that's pretty much it in, in as far as how you can communicate and work with your cards on a deeper level. Um, I teach tarot classes as well, and one of the first things that I say to my students is, I'm not gonna teach you the definitions of these cards. I'm sorry, like I'm just not. Go on Google, go on Pinterest, go wherever you'll find all the definitions that you need. Instead, I'm gonna teach you how to communicate with your cards, how to commune with them, how to build a relationship with them so that you can call upon them whenever. Um, an exercise that you wanna work on though is being able to tap into someone's energy. That will separate you from other readers. You know, readers oftentimes don't even acknowledge the other person. It's just like, okay, what's your name? What's your birth date? Okay, and then they just start pulling. Um, but a real reader who can utilize these cards in a way that they become a story of energy is how you can tell the difference and the only way you can do that is by tapping into that person's energy so an exercise that you can think about doing would be um, just simply allowing first practicing on a person right so asking the person do I have permission to tap into you and once they say yes an exercise that you can do is kind of envision that that person is a computer okay and their brain is a hard drive all right and you are another computer with another hard drive who's trying to tap into that right and you can do that by simply saying let's go to the world wide web together like let's go up on the internet together and allow our files to be exchanged all right so once they say yes to that it's almost like you're going into like a dropbox or whatever those websites are going in and you're going through their files psychically to pick out what it is you need to pick out in order to make these cards make sense to that person okay I know that sounds a little like odd but it's for for especially the younger generation they, they'll kind of get that a little bit better so think about it that way you know like a computer um I think that's it that's all the information I can give you about tarot hopefully that that was helpful for you guys if you have any questions or if you want to know more or if you even want to get a reading just let me know leave a comment below or you can reach me on Facebook the magical solution uh, be sure to like comment share and definitely subscribe if you feel like this information would be helpful for someone else who's embarking on tarot and learning tarot uh, for the first time definitely share this with them and yeah I will see you around thank you for stopping by